Invicta fights this weekend. Uh, Friday night at the Ameristar Casino in Kansas City, and it's quite the stacked card. A lot of famous women in mixed martial arts are making their Invicta debut. Absolutely. Uh, Cyborg, most notably. Also, you have uh, Sarah Kaufman fighting on this card. Zola Frosto Gurgel fighting on this card. Up and Down is a very, very interesting show. It had a lot of switch-ups um, around the Cyborg fight. Cyborg seemingly was going to fight three different women, but uh, she's fighting against uh, Fiona Mookslau. So, uh, yeah, Up and Down looks like an awesome show for women's fighting. Yeah, and uh, interesting implications on the line in the santos Mushlov fight because the winner of that is going to get a title shot facing, I believe, Marlos Kunin. See, that I couldn't figure that out from the uh, the information that I saw about the show because I knew originally when the fight was announced that that was the ramifications, but uh, that's good that they're keeping it. It kind of keeps, I guess, like a tournament format. Um, with the, There's another woman on the show, I believe... Uh, Gomez suffered an injury and was forced to withdraw. Right, Edie and um, Gomez. And Bud and Santos had to fight new opponents. So seemingly you can have, uh, whenever Santos come, uh, Gomez comes back, you can have a couple of fights as a tournament, a new, uh, a new number one contender for the belt. Yeah, that, I think that's the way to go too. And you don't want to keep Santos on the sidelines waiting with the kind of star power she has. It, it's got to be a situation where they debut her at one card and they move her up to a title fight if she wins. It's You don't want to keep her in the waiting too long. A- absolutely. And the, the worst thing that could come of that is another Tito Ortiz press conference. So it's going to be a while before they even need to go to the well and and even call a cyborg. But the day might come where they would like to do the cyborg fight. And, uh, you know, if she can lose the weight, I don't think they're going to do 145 weight class four. But if she can get down to 135, which a lot of people think she can, then uh, it'd be a very interesting fight, a big show. It should be indeed. And I, the thing I'm trying to figure out at this point is if it would have been a bigger fight if she'd stayed in UFC and continued on that path or if it actually becomes bigger now because if she puts together a few wins and Ronda puts together a few wins, then it becomes a situation where it's like the best woman outside of UFC fighting the best woman inside UFC. It sort of has that cross-promotional allure. Well, you know, uh, I think it's going to depend depend on how much the hardcore fans, I guess, gain interest behind it because Dana uh, does have his voice, uh, does have his ears on Twitter. So if, uh, you know, Cyborg goes to Invicta, crushes a couple of chicks, you know, the hardcore fans might demand it. And uh, he's very willing to act on that, I believe. But, um, you know, the UFC uh, press, the hype machine, I mean, they have enough footage of Cyborg just crushing chicks, and the fans are familiar enough with Ronda to where uh, I think that this fight could be a huge fight, um, you know, if both women do stand defeated. Indeed, but getting back to Invicta, there, there are a couple of fights that as I get closer to going to this event on Friday that have caught my attention more and more. And one that I'm sure you've seen the videos for, and if you haven't, go out of your way to watch them. And you people listening to the podcast, too, go out of your way to watch these. Is the Beck Hyatt videos versus her opponent, Jasminka. And I can't even pronounce her last name, so I'm not going to try. But Beck and Jasminka, these two chicks have a genuine, deep, abiding hatred for each other that rivals anything you saw in Nick Diaz and GSP, except maybe they're not putting it on. I think these two chicks would kill each other without a cage. You know, if you're an independent wrestler uh, and you and no one's ever heard of you, or maybe people have heard of you, just study Beck Hyatt, man. Like, I was looking around today at different Beck Hyatt stuff. She has a YouTube page. She does a video blog before every fight. I mean, uh, her management team or someone in her camp is just really smart because oh, they yeah. put together good packages for her. Uh, she has a very unique look. Uh, yes, I saw the video that I believe Invicta put together where it was Julie Ketsey, uh, mm-hmm. Beck Hyatt, and Jasmika. They were doing the interviews. I mean, that is awesome. That is a brilliant video. And and the fact that Kenzie just says, explain now, you've already said why you want to fuck each other up. Now explain why you're going to do it and how. It's like, wow. (laughs) You know, and the the thing that impressed me the most, Stevie, is that it didn't come off low brow or it, it came off very professional. It came off very, very good, man. And I, like I said, I instantly got interested in Beck. I watched her, uh, I watched half of her title fight, the Invicta before this. And then, uh, you know, I did some re- Google research on her or whatever and found out some more information because she compelled me that much as a character. And, uh, 
yeah, it's going to be a very, very interesting fight between the two. So, uh, something that, uh, I, I think is worth looking forward to. And that's the, I believe the opening fight on the main card. So it just shows you how stacked this show is. Yeah. After I watched that video package with Kedzie as the moderator, I was like, this is not the opening fight for TV or streaming or whatever it is we want to call the way Invicta will be seen on Friday. To me, that was like a co-main event immediately after that video was over. And I, I won't do Beck's accent because I can't do it justice, but she's got a really strong Aussie accent and she's got those two lip rings. As you said, she has a very unique look. And, and this woman just screams charisma. It just pours out of her. Absolutely. I mean, uh, her weight class is straw weight, which means she fights at, give me two seconds. She fights at 115 pounds. So I don't know how open the UFC is to bringing someone that small in, uh, especially the, since they're trying to establish 135. But I mean, if she could get on a bigger stage and if she does, if she, you know, she's very young in her fight career. She's fought mostly in Australia, but, uh, if she can fight, I mean, seemingly she's got star written all over if not you know in the fighting uh, surface maybe uh you know as a uh commentator announcer or something i mean she's just she has a star's presence in my Indeed. opinion yes and in fact to the degree that she has this presence i actually said to my wife tonight you know i realize she's two weight classes down but if they got a situation where they said we'll bring you in if you fight ronda you know, I bet she would put on the 20 pounds and take that fight because it, she just seems like the kind who will take a fight against anybody, no question. Julia Budd, um, she's most famously was the the kickboxer who was brought in to challenge Cyborg in Strike Force, but uh, I think most famously she was the uh, second girl to get her arm broke by Ronda in her path to winning the title. Um, I'm using Ronda a lot, but Stevie it's Stevie J's fault. He wrote a column today for the Observer <laughs> about why Ronda's important to this show. You have Caitlin Young, who is a uh, a name that uh, I think many uh, women's MMA fans can remember. Um, she fought, uh, Gina Carano on the first ever televised, uh, women's fight, which was the Elite XC primetime show. Um, in the next fight, you have Ziola Frosto, Frosto Gurgel, who's the former Bellator champion, who, uh, Bellator famously kind of disrespected her on the way out. Uh, you know, they kind of acted like she didn't exist, even though she was still with the company and she lost her last, uh, fight in Bellator in a different weight class to, Jessica Iyer and a, a nasty standing choke, uh, standing arm triangle. Um, Sarah Kaufman, who famously was the last woman to lose to Cyborg. Um, the two women in, in the, in the semi, in the flyway title fight, I'm not super familiar with the Adam Way title, Jessica Panay versus Michelle Watterson. Um, those <laughs> Adam <laughs> Way, that is a light, light weight class. Oh, but, yeah. uh, uh, Jessica Panay is a fighter I've heard a lot about, so I'm interested in seeing her fight. So, and that's just on the main card. I believe if you were the eye pay per view, I believe you may be able to see the the preliminary card. But um, on there, Rose and I can't pronounce her last name, but I know she's Pat Barry's girlfriend, and she trains with him. I've seen some crazy kicks from her in a different YouTube clip, so I'm interested in seeing her fight, which would be I believe her second pro fight. So, um. Yeah, just a very, very interesting show this weekend, which is a huge weekend for uh, MMA and pro wrestling. 